بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله عليه وسلم ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الغام وأكرمني من نور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان عدونك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم الحمد لله we have توفيق to spend few hours on understanding Islamic theory of education this is very important especially for teachers because we should know what we want to achieve our aim is not just to pass on some information although it is by itself a great achievement if we pass on information which is suitable and useful but it is not enough Islamic education is more than a matter of passing information a kind of help and assistance in development of people you are more like a gardener every person should himself or herself decide to build himself or herself develop himself or herself and we are just there to help to facilitate to give advice we cannot impose even Rasulullah cannot impose guidance and like but we should be available we should offer and it should be so sincere that the trainee doesn't think that we have any agenda or any selfish interest we want to force them to become like us no we just want to help them so that they can develop what we will do inshallah is First, we will talk about significance of knowledge in Islam, significance of teaching and learning, and then, inshallah, we will talk about some aspects of Islamic education. For example, what are the aims of Islamic education? And inshallah, if we get time, and I very much want to talk about virtues that we should try to uh, establish in our trainees we will discuss oh, okay. yes just f to begin with I said the mm -hmm. aim is not just to pass on information is to help your trainee in mm -hmm. the personal development you are there like a gardener but growth is the act of flower yeah. flower has to grow yeah, yeah. yeah you should just be available and be helping keeping away troubles and troublemakers <laughs> but in the end of the day they should grow no i mean the content of the ah. so first we talk about significance of knowledge in the quran and hadith significance of teaching and learning and ulama then we will talk about aims and objectives and in particular we will focus on virtues that we have to achieve not only some actions I had a, a similar course uh, about maybe two years ago we had a group of our teachers from here and a group also came from Canada and we had this Islamic tier of education so that is available online then uh, people started taking it as a course for our online program Kotal Learning Circle we had another round for training teachers again I taught this this would be the third time that we have it in the Islamic Center based on the first course <coughs> We are working on a textbook. 
it's about 200 pages so inshallah i hope i can share with you uh, some of these uh, inshallah notes so that inshallah you can benefit but you should also take your own note because first of all everyone has his or her own style in taking notes plus some of the things might not be the same inshallah we can put it online yes you're welcome so today inshallah bi we talk about significance of knowledge first i make a very uh, bold statement in my understanding and i say this very carefully and i don't like to exaggerate in my understanding, knowledge is one of the most important qualities of human beings and even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowledge is a very important quality. If you study Elmul Kalam, when they talk about qualities of God, you would see that many qualities originate from knowledge. Erada of Allah comes from His knowledge. Love comes from knowledge. Life comes from knowledge. Hekma is related. Even power is related to his knowledge. Arsh is related to his knowledge. Even Arsh is related to his knowledge. Knowledge is very, very important. Quran comes from his knowledge and wisdom, but wisdom is also related to knowledge. So knowledge is not something marginal. Knowledge is not just a kind of bonus it's very substantial. Let us reflect together on some verses of the Holy Quran. For example, in Surah at Talaq, 65, chapter 65, ayah 12, in end of the Surah, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim Allahu Alladhi Khalaqa Sab'a Samawatin ومن الأرض مثلهن يتنزل الأمر بينهن. God is the one who created seven skies, and from the earth similar to that means also seven earth. يتنزل الأمر بينهن. All the affairs come down from the skies towards the earth. Why? لتعلم. So that you know. أن الله على كل شيء قدير. You know that he has power and capability to do everything. وأن الله قد أحاط بكل شيء علم. Also he embraces everything with his knowledge. So the reason this is not the only reason because we have a hierarchy of reasons for creation. Yeah, there are different reasons for creation. But one major reason in this ladder, in this hierarchy of reasons, is so that we know He created everything in this world so that we know. So our knowledge is the aim. You know, in uh, the ayah, ma khalaqtul jinna wal insa illa li'abudun, Surah Zariyat, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, li'abudun ay li'arifun. I have not created jinns nor human beings except to serve me, to worship me. Imam Sadiq means to know me. Because our ma'arifah 
is the main way to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot serve him properly unless you have ma'rifah. Here also says he has created لِتَعْلَمُوا So that you know. But what should you know? Two things are mentioned. أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ You know his power. وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَحَاطَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عِلْمًا You know his knowledge. So our knowledge of his knowledge is one major reason and our knowledge of his power. But again, as I said, his power is related to his knowledge. Okay, inshallah, this becomes clearer later. So, Elm is such an important achievement that in order for us to know him and his qualities, he created the whole world. It means that if we don't have that knowledge, we have somehow missed the purpose of creation. Another ayah is in chapter 96, verse 14, in Surah Alaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam ya'lam bi anna Allah yara. Doesn't man know that God is seeing him? Again, the focus is on our knowledge and his knowledge. Because ru'yatullah, vision of God, is not a matter of seeing by eyes, means he has knowledge of what can be seen. Yeah? Mutakallamin say, when we say God is basir, it means that he has knowledge of the things which are seen. Samir means he has knowledge of the things which are heard. Yeah? So, our here, you know, hearing uh, capacity yeah. is through ear. Yeah. But ear is not the one that really understands. It's just an instrument. It's through your brain and then finally through your soul that you understand what is said. Sometimes your ear is perfectly okay. But, for example, you are busy about something. You don't hear. Yeah? yeah? It's because your mind is aware. Yes. Actual. Yes, this happens to men a lot, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because when they are doing something, if you speak to them, they don't understand. Yeah. Women are, mashallah, more attentive, you know, to if few things are said and happening around them, they can understand all of them. But men, yeah, <laughs> normally, at one point, one thing they can understand. It's due to concentration. Yes. And maybe the way their, you know, mind works. So, hearing is not really what ear does. Ear is only starting the process. Yeah? The same is, for example, with seeing. We need to have eyes, but sometimes eyes are okay, but you don't see. It means you don't understand. The taste is the same. A smell is the same. Anyway, what is important is understanding in us understanding of voices and sounds come through ear but in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understanding of voices and sounds doesn't come through ear but it has better understanding than us yeah so alam ya'lam bi anna Allah yara doesn't man know? Of course he knows, but unfortunately he forgets or he doesn't take it seriously. That God is seeing. God is seeing. We have this beautiful advice. U'budillah ka'annahu ka'annaka tara fa'illam takun tara fa'innahu yara. First, worship, serve God as you are seeing Him. You must feel His presence. Yeah? yeah. 
But if you cannot feel his presence, at least you must know that he is seeing you. Seeing. He is watching. Okay. So we must know that he is seeing us. Alam ya'lam bi anna Allah yara. Another reference in the Quran is in Surah Ar-Rahman. Would you say watching you is better than seeing you? Both you can say watching or seeing. Watching means seeing, but sometimes watching means also uh, controlling. Yeah. It means this. In Surat Ar Rahman, which is chapter 55, I have a question for you. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ar Rahman Allam al Quran khalaq al insan. Shouldn't be the other way around. Ar Rahman khalaq al insan Allam al Quran. Yeah. His creation, uh, came from his Pardon? But his creation uh, came from his knowledge. Yeah, but it is ta'aleem, not knowledge. God. Salaam alaykum. God. Salaam alaykum. Salaam alaykum. God taught the Quran, created human beings. It should be the other way around, yeah? خلق الإنسان علم القرآن But تعليم is so important Yes, that he mentions it first Indeed, the reason for creating us is so that we can learn the Quran because if there was no guidance there was no point in creating us Yeah? Yeah, but that was after creation of Adam. So, in time, Ta'alim comes after creation of human beings. In time. You must first create them, then you can teach them. You cannot teach someone which is not created yet. Yeah? Time-wise, Ta'alim comes after creation. But if you look at the importance of which one is more important? Ta'aleem is more important than creation. This is why in Hadith we say you have three types of fathers. One is the father that gave you birth. One is father that gave you wife. One is the father who taught you. Which one is most important? Uh, the one who allamak. Of course, if your biological father also has taught you, so he has two merits. But if someone just creates someone and someone guides and taughts, which one is more important? The one who creates or the one who educates? The one who educates. In the case of Allah, He has done both to us. But which action is more important? Ta'alim is more important than... Yeah. So, our capacity for progress could not be utilized without ta'aleem. Yeah? We need ta'aleem so that we can function at the level of human beings, not to remain only as level of animals. Yeah? We need ta'aleem. Ar-Rahman allama al-Qur'an khalaq al-insan allamahu al-bayan Again, ta'aleem. Bayan is very important. What does Allamahu al-Bayan mean? Means he taught us how to express ourselves. 
because if we were not able to express ourselves, we could not also teach each other. And if our teachers were not able to express themselves, then we could not learn. We could not have any a school, any madrasa, if we didn't have ability to express. Also, we could not have any social and interpersonal relations because we need communication. One of the greatest gifts of Allah is al-bayan, that we can communicate. Yeah. And you know, most of our problem in relations, in my understanding, is from what? Uh -huh. Either we don't communicate or we have miscommunication. Either we stop talking to each other or if we talk to each other, we don't talk properly. Bayan is to establish and strengthen relation. Yeah? Bayan is like a bridge that you make between you and others. Unfortunately, we use Bayan to release our anger on others. It's a misuse of bridge. It's like you use bridge to attack people. <laughs> bridge is to connect. To send good and gifts. Not to release your anger and send fire. So sometimes people don't talk to each other. Which is very bad. If you have problems with each other. And you don't communicate. The problems remain. And become deeper and deeper. If you don't speak to each other for one day. It's a problem. If you don't speak two days, become bigger. If you don't speak for three days, become bigger. And if you want to sort it out, it becomes more difficult. Therefore, you should not stop talking to each other. But also, you have to learn how to speak. Quran says, Ghulu lennase husna. What is the meaning of husna? Host in Arabic is different from khair. Khair means good or better. Host is good with beauty. Something which is good and beautiful. Qulu lennase. means you must say good things, but also well presented, well wrapped. Yeah? Even if I give you gift, but I don't present it properly. Yeah? For example, if I buy, for example, for someone, some chocolates. But then I put it in a dirty, you know, paper and give it to that person. Although it was a gift, but that person feels maybe even insulted. Yeah? I feel that. Says, I'm not a beggar. Why you are giving me like this? Or even if you wrap it, but throw at the person. Yeah? So, قُولُوا لَنَّاسِ husna Means you have to say good things in a beautiful way. Or, Quran says, قُولُوا قَوْلًا sadida. What is sadid? Sadid means firm. Firm doesn't mean harsh. Because Quran also says, Qula lahu qawlan layyan. Firm and soft. Harsh actually is loose. When you speak harshly, it's not firm. And many times you regret. Many times you find flaws your, in your words. <laughs> People, 90% of people, don't distinguish between harshness and firmness. Between harshness and strength. If they want to pretend that they are strong, they speak harshly, which is wrong. You have to speak firmly but softly. 
like a wise, well-educated mother. Whatever she says is based on knowledge, experience, wisdom, but in a nice way. You can be firm, yeah. but gentle. So it's different from her. Anyway, bayan is very important. We have to talk a lot about bayan because I think it's a big problem that we have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions ta'alim al-Qur'an as the first thing that Ar-Rahman has done. Not first in time. I mean in the order in the surah. Okay? Ar-Rahman allama al-Qur'an. The first thing in surah Ar-Rahman is allama al-Qur'an. Second, khalaq al-insan. Third, allama al-bayan. Again, ta'alim. Also, in Surat um, Alaq, we have this, not because when we had Alam Ya'lam Banna Allah Yara, Iqra' wa rabbukal akram. Yeah? Iqra' wa rabbukal akram. Why? He is Akram. This shows that Akramiya to be more honorable is a matter of teaching. Have you noticed? Iqra wa rabbukal Akram. Okay, what this Akram has done? As he is telling us. Is not only to have a knowledge, but you have to write it as well. Ah. And he has taught us how to, how to write. It. How to write. <coughs> but if it, it shows that in society, okay, all human beings have honor. But among children of Adam, some have more honor. Yeah. One is Inna akramakum inda Allah atqaqum. Those who are more pious, they have more honor on top of general honor that all human beings have. All human beings have honor and dignity. Yeah, like at karamna bani Adam. But those who are muttaqi, they have more karama. Inna akramakum inda Allah atqaqum. Inna akramakum. And Allah. This is very important. This doesn't mean those who are muttaqi should expect a special privilege. Their honor is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for example, if they want to buy bread, they have to stand in queue. <laughs> if they want to get salary, they should take salary based on other merits. Not They cannot say, you know, I am muttaqi. Inna akramakum inda Allah. Atkakum, so give me more salary. No. This is end Allah. A muttaqi never actually say, I am muttaqi. Yeah? Give me more. So, karamna bani adam, but inna akramakum end Allah atqakum. Apart from muttaqin, ulama are also raised. As far as I know, you can correct me. If you know any exception, please let me know. As far as I know and remember, in the Quran, only two things can raise you. Iman and taqwa and knowledge. Nothing else. Your ethnicity. You are black or white, yellow, red. Your language, your geography, your age, nothing by itself. You are married to the Prophet even. Nothing automatically gives you credit. 
especially things which are not in your hand. For example, who is my father or my mother is not in my hand. It's not my choice to which family I belong. Yeah, which ethnicity I have, which color I have, which language I speak. These don't give me any privilege. Only iman and taqwa and knowledge. هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ So you understand the significance of knowledge. Are those who know and don't know the same? إِنَّمَا يَتَذَكَّرُ أُلُّ الْأَلْبَابِ If you use your brain, you would understand that those who know are not the same as those who don't know. Okay? يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ Allah raises those who have been given Iman, or those who have uh, Iman, those who have faith, and those who have been given knowledge in ranks. Allah Metabati has a beautiful uh, interpretation here. He says, on the Day of Judgment, people are first put in a high rank based on their Iman. Okay? After that, Based on their knowledge, first. Iman, first. and then knowledge, which means Mu'minin have higher position, and among Mu'minin, those who have more knowledge have more higher position. In other words, this means that everything we achieve in dunya. would be transformed into a matter of Iman and Ilm. Because we are in the world of spirits. It's not a matter of who has bigger body or bigger muscles or mo more money. Because these are not related, relevant anymore. We would be only very immaterial. Of course, we would have body, but our body is not determining our personality or character, yeah? So, who is higher in Akhirah? The, more uh, the one who has greater Iman or more knowledge. But this knowledge is not knowledge of terms and concepts, you know, it's not conventional knowledge. It's not, you know, who has PhD, for example. No, it's a matter of Ma'rifah. It's related, yes. So those who have knowledge, they are expected to have more understanding of greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, what about these people who are like scientific, scientists and who is uh, making so many things for the humanity? That's another thing. If someone through his knowledge helps people this is an act of charity which is appreciated it's appreciated but whether they have iman or not it can then have different impact if they don't have iman in dunya they get the reward if they have iman they get in dunya and akhirah اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم yeah, he taught us what we didn't know. Okay? So, Akrami of Allah is related to his teaching. In Islamic society, ulama and teachers should have very high position. Again, I'm not saying about worldly privilege. It's not that we give them more money. But we give them more respect. Because in Islamic society, the currency is not dollars or pounds. The currency is respect. Yeah? How much respect you give to people. That's the main thing. Car Dollar and pound is just for body. We have to meet our physical needs. How much respect you give to people. Yeah? 
So, ta'allim is very important. Rabbuka al-akram alladhi allama bil-qalam allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam. Also, as one of the sisters mentioned, in the case of Adam ala nabiyyina wa alihi wa alihi salam, we have very uh, valid point order about significance of knowledge. You know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told angels that they should do sajda, they should prostrate before Adam, in front of Adam. When did he say that? Uh, actually, before. before From before his creation, he told them, I am going to create and I am to make him my Khalifa when I complete his creation. This is a great lesson. That if you want to ask people to do something, you have to prepare them. Allah prepared angels even before created Adam. Yeah? In advance. So he communicated to angels, Bayan. Yeah, he communicated, he prepared them. And also, when they had question. They didn't have objection. It's wrong to think they had objection. They didn't have objection. They had question. He said, fiha. This is question. In Islam, question is welcome. You can ask question. Indeed, the Quran says, Fas'alu. The Quran asks us to ask question. But, pardon? Ah, yes. Question. Quran says, Fas'alu. What? Fas'alu ahla dhikr in kuntum la ta'lamu. If you don't know, ask those who know. Sometimes we know and we ask in order to show off. <laughs> yeah? Especially nowadays happens in the classes. People have mobile. They search for something and then they ask question. You know? <laughs> this is not bad if it is genuine for understanding. But uh, to show off is not good. In kuntum la ta'lamun. Okay? And fas'alu ahla dhik. You should ask someone who knows. If you don't know and ask someone who doesn't know, you confuse him. Waste time and confuse that person. Unfortunately, nowadays, some people ask questions from the audience and they are not able to answer and confuse people. So, you should ask. No problem. I, actually, you should ask. Fas'alu is amr. But fas'alu ahla dhikr and kuntum latar. I told maybe some of you this story. We had a conference in Germany and there was a lecture from Berlin, from one of the universities in Berlin. And she said, it seems that the Quran doesn't encourage asking questions. And she mentioned the story of Musa and Khizr. And I said, the Quran actually not only doesn't discourage, Quran encourages us to ask questions. But there are etiquettes for asking questions. Whom to ask? When to ask? How to ask? I should ask someone who knows. When? In a proper time. For example, this person's lecture has not yet finished. The talk has not finished. I should be patient. The problem 
with Musa and his you know issue was not that why he asked questions the problem was that he had to be patient and wait till things become clear especially because this was a test of his patience more than anything else <laughs> yeah sometimes the teacher asks you about ideas that he has taught you but sometimes the teacher is testing your patience in a spiritual matters, normally teachers test patience and obedience, not cleverness. If any spiritual teacher is going to take you, he would not test how clever you are, your IQ. He would test how patient and obedient you are. So, thank you. The question was not about why you asked. The question was when. And how and whom? Fasalu ahlazek encourages us to ask, but in kuntum la I remember many years ago when we were in Manchester. You know, I was from end of ninety six till two thousand one in Manchester. So two thousand two thousand one, I was mostly in London, but. I was also in Manchester. So there were times that we had very hot debate in Iran, which was reflected also in our community in Manchester. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we had visitors from Iran, and that was an opportunity for people to ask questions, especially Islamic, but also mixed with politics. You know, some, some Islamic issues become also politicized. So what was very interesting and always remain in my mind, I noticed one of the students, PhD students, asked a question and gave his question and then left. So it means that he doesn't want to answer. He just wants this to be raised and, you know, to challenge the speaker. <laughs> if you really want to understand, you re remain. Not that, you know, you write a question and give and go. It was just by accident <laughs> that I saw. Yeah. And it remained in my mind. Yeah. There are people who say, you know, sometimes it has happened to me. I have a question and I have asked every alum they were not able to answer. Whoever says something like this. So two options come to my mind. Two possibilities. One is that his question is really a very good and difficult question. The second is that he doesn't want to understand. Because sometimes people don't want to understand to say that, you know, I have, you know, they are proud that I have a question that no one is able to answer. A great etiquette of learner is humbleness. Yeah? If you don't want to understand, you will never understand. In some, you know, places, especially in the past, you know, uh, when people go for tablig to some villages, you know, small cities, you know, for example, there are some people who have some difficult mas'ala, fiqhi issue. When someone goes there, first they ask him these questions. They have learned these difficult questions and they ask this person. Maybe this person doesn't know, he has to check. But they put him into, you know, difficulties, you know, and put him on the spot. So, question is good. It is encouraged. Sometimes it is even obligatory. If you read Rasala, it says, all the issues that are relevant to you, you must learn. If you don't know, you must ask. You must ask. It's wajib to ask. Anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say to angels, why you ask me questions? Yeah? Allah didn't say, why you ask me a question? You don't have any right to ask me a question. By the way, in brackets, some people don't uh, understand this ayah properly. How do you interpret this ayah? Means he is not questioned about what he does. And they are questioned. What does it mean? 
Yeah. Now, what does he mean, Laius Alam Moyafar? He is not asked about what he does. Ah. Yeah, what does it mean? Some, some people don't understand this. They think that it means that Allah doesn't give anyone right to ask him why he does things, like a tyrant. A tyrant doesn't let people to ask him questions. If you ask him why you made these decisions, he says, none of your business. Yeah? But this is not the meaning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Actually, angels ask him. <laughs> angels ask him about why he is doing this. La yus'alu amma yaf'al means Allah. Pardon? Ah. Ah. Because he always acts wisely and morally. There is no reason to ask him. Unless you want to understand, you cannot question him. You can ask him question, but not question him, not challenge him. Yeah? Imagine you have a person who has knowledge, who has sincerity, who has taqwa, who is very kind. You don't challenge him, but you can tell him, could you explain to me what was the point? My information is limited. I don't have experience. Okay? So... Angels ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ataja'alu fiha man yufsidu fiha wa yasfiku dima This was just a question, not objection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't tell them it's none of your business. Just do what I tell you. No. And also, he didn't just give them the answer. <coughs> Because they were not getting the best result just by giving them a theoretical answer. Allah planned a kind of theater, a kind of performance, yeah, to make them understand, not just to tell them the answer. You know, sometimes you tell the answer, sometimes you make that person discover the answer. Allama Adam al Asma Akullah. He taught Adam all the facts. We don't have time to go into this explanation about Asma, but just say facts. All the facts. Then presented those facts to the angels. Then he said, what are these things called? And the only be asma means what are these things called? They said, Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma Allah. May you be glorified. We don't know except what you have taught us. There is no black market for knowledge. <laughs> Knowledge only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For angels, everything comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was not what they were taught. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said, Alam aqul lakum, inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamu. Didn't I tell you that I know things that you don't know? So, if you see everything is built around knowledge, then ask them to inform me, not to teach me, because Allah knows. He doesn't say, He teaches Adam, ask them to inform him. They say, our knowledge is limited. Then he says, I have knowledge of what you don't have. This all is built around knowledge. In this way, they realize why Adam should be Khalifatullah. Because Khalifatullah needs unlimited capacity for knowledge. Again, this is another sign that knowledge is very important. Because Khalifatullah should have that quality, which is the most important quality of Mustakhlafun'an. 
if he's going to be vice student of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we should see what is the most important thing in Allah so that Khalifatullah should have it. It shows that Allah's main quality is also knowledge. Okay, inshallah we continue after break. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.